Hello and welcome to Australia in Space TV. My name's Chris Cubbage, I'm the executive editor with My Security Media. We're at the 14th Australian Space Forum in Adelaide with the Andy Thomas Space Foundation. I'm with Kelly Yeo with Blue Dwarf Space. Kelly, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, thank you for having me. Blue Dwarf Space, it took me a few takes to get that out today. Blue it was dwarf. amusing. You're it in, was, regulatory, it was fantastic. Uh, in the regu space regulations uh, and you're creating a platform for companies to access uh, space uh, or regulatory uh, sort of regulatory frameworks sets. around space. Correct. So how did you come up with Blue Dwarf Space? Blue Dwarf Space, well we are a part of the ICC uh, UniSA Innovation Collaboration Centre's right. um, Space Venture Catalyst program. Uh, yes. uh, so when we first applied for that we weren't sure we were actually going to start a company Got so it, yes. it was this brand new company and we were aware that there's um, a lot of times when people pivot yes uh, so you start a company that does blah and then it's like well that's not going to really work for us so we're going to change our minds and do this other thing Great. so we didn't want to have a name that was associated to performing a particular action right. and then have to change it or have something that was completely unrelated so we thought well let's just go completely unrelated to start with and so it's a bit of an homage to Red Dwarf clearly yes, yes. Um, but okay. blue <laughs> And um, yeah, it was just something that we thought we could just apply to anything or not apply to anything and just, you know, have well, it we, be. We interviewed Jasmine uh, earlier today from Venture Capitalist Space. Uh, so she kind of gave, it a, gave an overview of what, what they do. Yes. Um, so what's your background? I understand you're a lawyer. I am a lawyer. Yes. My background is actually in computer programming. Okay. I spent many years working as a computer programmer uh, and was um, a Linux kernel hacker. So, um, right. Operating system so development. You're in cyber security for as well, right? Former hacker. Security. A nice. former, you know. Well, we published the Australian Cyber Security <laughs> magazine, so always interested in pre talking to a previous hacker. Yeah, uh, it's not necessarily. It depends on your use of the word hacking. So yeah, um, okay. You know, ethical, uh, ethical and and more. Um, <laughs> But that's still good. You've got the insights. More application into a platform, of right? existing things to your purpose. Yes. So being able to take something that you need to use and make it what you really want it to yeah. be. But um, you understand the notion of re reverse engineering and yeah, understanding absolutely. how things work. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's your current focus now? My current focus, well, since then I've done a law degree, uh, so I've done a Juris Doctor, um, focusing completely on space law, and I wanted to do something where I could um, combine my two passions, which is that of the computer programming or the technology yep. background, with the new love of law and particularly space law. I've always wanted to work in space, but didn't think that that was really an option until yeah. you know doing a law degree and whoo, space law, right. yay, it's let's perfect. do it. Um, yeah. So yeah, this just gives us the option to be able to combine those two things and provide a software as a service that allows people to gain their permits via our service. So the regulatory hurdles, I guess, are, are really something that people have described as being really quite horrible. Yeah particularly in the space sector. Um, so we wanted to provide something that does most of the hard work for people. So we'll basically be a one-stop shop where you just, you know, it's a single point of data entry, single point of failure, single point of contact, single point of everything. So yeah. whatever happens, you just need to contact us. We'll deal with all of the stuff you don't want to deal with and we will make sure that all of the information that you provide is suitable to gain you that permit. Yeah. So we're not we're not skipping by any processes or jumping like jumping Very through nice. through hoops or anything to try yeah. to skip anything. We're making sure that all of your I's are dotted, your T's are. I take it the other thing else. is the platform stays current to regulatory changes as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So everything we're doing is completely data driven so yes. that whatever changes, we just need to change it in the database. Yeah. Uh, if we've got third party suppliers that provide a particular service in requirement of fulfilling those needs. We'll um, make sure that they're updated or that we gain a new third party provider and that our database is always linked to whatever is the requirements at that given time. And I take it as a subscription software as a service? We're still working on our pricing model. There will be a subscription model as well as um, you know some people will only need to have some components. So if yeah. you've already done 35 permits and you just need to do another permit that is based on those, then you don't need as many components to be Got redone. So at that point, maybe you don't really... Well at the moment? Uh, we will be doing a bunch of services yeah. with that, so yeah. Okay, so where are you currently at? Well, we're still a brand new... Nice. We're, we're, we're just still in our incubator section, so we're still, I guess, requirements gathering and trying to find people who want to work with us to make sure that what we're doing is what they really, really want us to be doing. That was my next doing. question. How many customers 
have you got or do you foresee? What's your market research tell you? Our market research tells us that you know everybody that we speak to goes, we need you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, you know, there are some big what, companies that have. Just the regulatory <laughs> well, there are some bigger companies that have lawyers and entire yeah. regulatory divisions, but a lot of the smaller companies, in particular, are a few engineers that yeah. um, don't want to spend their time reinventing the wheel, finding out about processes that well, are it's definitely reasonably a pain secretive. Point. Yeah, it's a pain point. It's a massive pain point. Particularly for the launch companies, particularly the early ones. I won't yep. name names, but the ones that have been launching recently and, and going through, they feel like they're. They're setting the pace because uh, the regulators weren't even aware yes. uh, that they were coming through and yeah, they feel like they're having to break new ground. Yes. Uh, so hopefully they're making it a bit easier, but definitely from a service viewpoint, they're also startups, right? They don't Absolutely. have the money uh, or the time to be looking at the regulatory environment. To be spending all the time trying to fix their processes yeah. and make sure that they're up to date. Um, a lot of a lot of the information that we're getting back from those sorts of companies is there's a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back yeah. and forth. So we submit something, it comes back, we submit it again, it comes back, it's, we submit it again. What we want to do is make sure that we perfect that process, working with the agency, working with our third party suppliers, make sure that we know exactly what is needed at any time. It will be different for different applications. You know, if you've got a satellite with little monkey arms that does something that's different requirements as compared to a satellite that's just doing Earth observation or a rocket or something else. Yeah. So, We'll make sure that we're familiar with all the requirements for every different scenario that you could possibly want to do. Or if it's a new scenario, entirely new, we will get up to speed with that scenario as quickly as possible and add that capability to our service. Yep. Uh, just to make sure that you know we're, we're familiar with everything you need, we can get it done, we know every piece of data that you need to be able to get that done, and we'll go and do it for you. As long as you provide us with the data, we'll get you the, the job. So at least you're going to be customer driven uh, in the Absolutely early Absolutely customer driven. But we, we foresee that we can actually service three different markets. So our customers who need to get their permits, they have to currently deal with a lot of third party suppliers to get certification for various yeah. things. Um, there's a lot of back and forth between those people as well. Uh, so if we know exactly what they need for their certification, we can automate our services with theirs. We can make sure that we can get you that certification back within you know six minutes as opposed to six weeks right. sort of thing depending on how much they're willing to automate their services with us so that depends on what actual requirements we discover through the discovery process we've already got some partners who are willing to automate their services with us as much as possible um, so yeah we, we have a much faster turnaround time with that so we can help our clients we can help those third-party suppliers and if we can provide to the Australian Space Agency a permit application that has everything that they need yeah. in the way that they need it that makes their job a whole lot easier I take too. I think they can access the platform as well it's not just oh, sending yeah. off an email maybe potentially even more secure Yep. If it's a closed platform that only uh, those that need to see it uh, yes. have access to. Are you focusing on just on the Australian regulatory environment or is this something you feel to you can start scale off out? With, yeah, to start off with definitely focusing on the Australian environment. But because it is so data driven, then mm. we can just swap it out for whatever the local regulatory requirements. So we'll be looking at expanding likely to New Zealand as a first step right. um, and then we've had a fair bit of interest from the India space sector so we'll be looking at expanding eventually to India yep. and then from there who knows. Wonderful, well it's great, the, uh, the other one was uh, women in space as well, uh, are you doing anything there in, in that? Um, we've been a bit tied down with doing this, <laughs> but no, it's definitely on my radar of things that I want to absolutely be yeah. involved in. So during my tech career, I was very involved in women in technology. I right. was um, one of the founding members and um, on the main committee for Australia, New Zealand and worldwide women in technology committees right, yes, throughout my team. Yes. Yeah, so I was um, you know, big in that at that time and once I have time, I'll <laughs> very much intend to be very nice. involved in that here. Well look, I've, I've come across other similar platforms working with the regulatory and law environments. Uh, particularly around sort of reporting to regulators. Yes. And so I definitely think you're onto something here. Uh, it's, it's oh, we can also do the reporting to regulators as well. well. That's, <laughs> and that's another key point. I really do think uh, from a startup uh, perspective, you've got a, a, a great niche uh, here. So I do wish you the best of luck. Many thanks. Kelly Teo, thank you very much for Blue Dwarf Space. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much.